Hi, this is Scott with Places. What we'll be taking a look at today with this video is how you can implement a custom auto number functionality into your Places app form. For example, say you need to have a custom job number or purchase order number, something of that nature. This video is going to show you how you can implement that using your Places app form and a data source and some rules. Now, our custom number today for this video is going to be coming from the SharePoint list called Next ID Number. You can see I have just one row in here, and I've also created a custom column in my SharePoint list called Current Number. Let's take a look at that very briefly so you can see how I've set that up. You can see that Current Number is defined as a number data type. And then the only other change that I've made when I set up this column is I've changed the number of decimal places here to zero. Uh, for this sample, I'm not interested in seeing any decimal places. Other than that, everything else is the default. So we'll click OK on this. Now in this list itself, the other thing that I've done is I've modified the SharePoint view to include the ID column. This is going to become apparent why this is needed once we get to designing the data source in the Places app form. But just know that you're going to want to add that to your list as well so that you can see exactly which row your, your number is sitting on. It, it doesn't have to be one. It can be whatever it happens to be, right? But you just need to know what it is. So you're going to need to add that ID column to your SharePoint view. So I've pre-populated my current number a column with a value of 100. Once again, that can be whatever value that you want to start with. So let's go ahead and change over now to the Places App Forms Designer. You can see that I've started designing a form here. And for the next number field, I'm actually using a label. And the reason that I've done this is most of the time when you create a custom numbering scheme for your form, you don't want that number to be changed by the user. You just want it there so that they can see what that next number actually is or what the number is for the current PO or job or whatever it is that they're doing. So the easiest way in places is just set that up as a label. And you can see that I've named that label LBL next number. Now, in this particular sample demo that we're doing here, the way that I want this to work is when the form opens, the next number is clearly visible to the user. So in this case, if you recall, our list had 100 in there as our default starting value. When this form opens, we want it to show 101. However, I don't want to actually increment the value in the list until the user clicks the Save button. And the reason for that is, is uh, this allows for cancellations of the form. Uh, maybe it's late in the day, the user wants to stop and come back the next day, whatever it may be. If you increment that as soon as the form opens, if you actually increment it in the list, and then they cancel, well then you may not uh, have the next actual number correct. Right? It's already going to be incremented and not used. Now that may be fine in your scenario, uh, but in this case, I don't want that to occur for this demo. I just want to be able to increment it once the user clicks save. So you're going to see a little bit of functionality on how to do that as well. So the first thing that we'll need to set up here is a data source to that particular SharePoint list called Next ID Number. So let's go ahead and click Create Data Source. Let's give this a name of DS Next Number. And remember that is a SharePoint list, so we'll choose SharePoint here and click OK. We'll select that list. Next. And here is our first thing we're going to set up is our select command. In other words, let's get the current value from that list. And when I get that value, I want to take the current number that's in my SharePoint list and put that in my label called LBL Next Number. Now, here is where the actual SharePoint list ID becomes important. Um, again, typically, you're only going to have just this one row in your custom number list, but if you happen to set this up in some other list, which you can do as well, you will need to know what that particular row ID is. Because what we want to do is we, we want to basically say to ourselves, we want the current number from this list where the ID is equal to 1. So we're going to flip over here to next ID number. This could be 100, it could be 10,000. It makes no difference what that number is. We just want to be able to get the current number value where the ID is equal to 1. So that's why that ID becomes so important. All right, so now we've got our select statement set up. We can click OK to this. Now we need to set up a trigger. 
And again, as I mentioned a few moments ago, I want this value to be there when the form loads for the user. So we'll click Add Trigger. We'll select Form Load as our trigger and create that rule. Okay, so now you can see I have my form load trigger set up for that. So this is the get portion of um, this particular data source. So if we click finish on this and preview this form, you will see now that my label is actually populated with that current value from my list. But obviously it's not incremented yet. We still have to implement that functionality. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll close the form. Let's change over to the rule tab here in our Clasis designer. You can see on form load, here is that command to go get the next or the current value from our SharePoint list. It calls our data source called DS next number and calls the select action and then returns that back to our label. So now what we want to do though is we want to increment that. For this particular demo, I'm going to be incrementing by one. That may or may not be what you need, but you'll at least see how to do that here. So we'll click add action and we'll say set our label equal to the current value plus one. All right, so now if I preview our form, now we have what will be the next incremented value for that number. Now I have not updated this yet. If I flip back over to the list and refresh this for you, you'll see that this is indeed still set to 100. So all I've done so far in this form is to get the current value and increment that value by one in my form, not in the list yet. So now what we want to do is implement the second piece of this functionality, which is when the user clicks the save button, we write this new incremented value back to the SharePoint list. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Close our form, we'll go back over to the designer and we'll Go to our data source here called DS Next Number, and we'll choose to edit that. Now what we want to do is add our update statement. Now the same thing here, we're going to be updating the current number column with the value that is in our field called LBL Next Number. It's in our label, in other words. Remember, we need to make sure that we're incrementing the right item in our list. So to do that again, we'll choose ID is equal to one. Same uh, filter or criteria that we added in the select statement as well. So let's click OK with that. Once again, we need a trigger and we want this trigger to be when the user clicks save. So we'll add a trigger. Here is my button save. There we go. So now we have our trigger. Let's click finish. And I'll just switch over briefly to our rule tab so you can see when you did that functionality there of adding our button save. We're calling the same data source, this time just calling the update action. So let's go ahead and test this. Let's preview the form. There is our new number, potential new number, I should say. Let's again switch over to our list. I'll refresh this one more time so you can see that this has not changed. It is still 100. Go back over to our form. Let's click save. That's done. And if I switch over here to our list, you can see now that this indeed did get incremented. And if I preview the form one more time, we are now showing the next number is 102. So it really is that easy to implement a custom auto numbering functionality into your Clasis app form. Simply have, uh, in our case, a SharePoint list that is used to uh, store your incremented values or the numbering system that you want to use. And in your Clasis app form, you simply need a data source that gets that current value, increments it by whatever value you want. In our case, we did one. And then at some point, some action will then write that new value back to your SharePoint list. Now, there are a couple more things that I want you to think about here as you move forward and implementing this in your Clasis app forms. Uh, this works fantastic if you have a scenario where there's one user uh, doing your data entry. Right, that one person is opening the form so they'll get the right number and then when they're done they click save and it increments the value in the list. But imagine if you have multiple users, let's say two people that are entering your data. Well, when both of them open the form, they're going to get what could potentially be the same next number. Right? In our case, 101 and 101. Because it's going to depend upon whether or not the first person that did it actually clicks save before the second person opened the form. So those type of scenarios will require more business logic for you to think about how do you want to handle that. 
do you want to have that value updated in the list when they actually open the form? That might be the best solution for you. Or there might be some other business logic. Uh, maybe you just show them the next number when you click save, you once again grab the current value that's there and actually increment that in case someone else has already gotten in and saved something uh, beforehand. So there are some other scenarios you're gonna wanna think about as you walk through this, but at a basic level, implementing your own custom auto incrementing number field is extremely easy with Places. I hope you found this video to be beneficial. We are going to be producing more of these how-to type videos in the coming weeks and months, so be sure to check our website often for new demonstrations. You can find all of our videos at http colon slash slash www.clasis.com slash pages slash view demo dot ASPX. If there is a video you would like to see that is currently not on our site, please let us know by sending an email to info at clasis.com and we will do our best to get one created for you. Again, I hope you found this video to be of benefit and thank you for using Clasis app forms.